Well, Douglas Clayton is chief executive and founder of Leopard Capital. He joins us now to look at investing in Myanmar. Leopard are raising Cambodia's first private equity fund during the uh, 2008 financial crisis. I've got to ask you, uh, Douglas, whether you're going to be doing the same sort of thing now for Myanmar. Yes, we're looking forward to participating in the transformation of Myanmar's economy. It's a very exciting day in the beginning of a, of a long process for Myanmar to join the Asian century. And um, I think there's a good chance for foreign investors to play a part in that as well. Okay, but I'm just saying, are you going to raise a private equity fund as you did in the case for uh, Cambodia? Yes, we certainly are working on that. And as soon as the sanctions are, are lifted, we expect to, uh, to launch our fund. It's a question of uh, when rather than if, isn't it, now, when it comes to the lifting of those sanctions. But I had a guest on earlier saying it's more difficult for the United States to lift its various sanctions than it is for the European Commission. Yes, but I think that, that um, there'll be very little reason to maintain sanctions um, after this election is, is uh, accepted and the uh, foreign investment laws are, are being changed. The, um, uh, pieces being made with some of the, the um, insurgent groups. So I think that um, the U.S. doesn't sanction other countries that have arguably worse uh, situations than Myanmar is today. Uh, let's talk about the investment opportunities you, uh, you see there. I mean, we've had effectively 50 years of military administration. In fact, we've had 50 years of military government there in Myanmar. What, uh, does that mean that it's basically every sphere of the economy that needs to, to be invested in? Yes, there's a great opportunity because um, the country has missed out of modernization. What's happened in over five decades across Asia, in many cases, hasn't reached Myanmar. So really, you can invest in almost anything that, that um, other Asian countries have. And we'll see Myanmar transform into a, a more traditional ASEAN economy. I think a lot of people are actually salivating at the prospect of all that energy or the potential energy resources that the country has. Yes, that's one of the big ticket opportunities, uh, oil and gas, uh, as well as hydropower and um, mining, um, food production. Myanmar is blessed with many different natural resources, more than most countries of its size. Uh, so it should be a wealthy country, and this will draw a lot of foreign investment. Okay, where else specifically do you, do you see also a lot of people showing interest? Many investors are looking at real estate opportunities because not much has been built for quite a while in, in Myanmar. Uh, it needs hotels, it needs offices, residential, commercial, shopping malls. So that's one area that will draw a lot of interest. Another area is the banking system. The uh, um, whole financial system is, is obsolete in Myanmar, uh, almost dysfunctional. So there's opportunities uh, to build basic uh, financial services. I guess, Douglas, one of the questions many investors will be asking themselves is, if it is such a one-way bet, there's got to be risks inherent in all this, and surely one of them is, well, okay, we're on the route to democratic transition, but can we have a U-turn and go back to the old days? There's always that risk, but given the, the uh, tremendous changes in the, the, that have already taken place, I think if, if that risk was, was uh, large, it would have already played out. I think Myanmar's made a, a, a huge decision to join the world economy, and uh, I think the way forward will be a, a, a um, virtuous cycle. As, as good things happen, it will drive further interest and further reforms. Douglas, thank you so much uh, for joining us. Douglas uh, Clayton there from uh, Leopard Capital joining us uh, there from Bangkok. Uh,